for 100 years, the Chicago District Golf Association has stood for excellence in this extraordinary game of golf. Now the CDGA's magazine comes to life on TV. Chicago District Golfer celebrates the traditions of the past while connecting with the present. It's a golf show that is sure to inform and to have a little fun along the way. For what's important in Chicago golf, it's Chicago District Golfer TV. On our June edition, we go back to the beginning of the CDGA. Jordan and Zach take us to the Quad Cities in the John Deere Classic. Chicago-based radius roll putters make sense and they make putts. We'll have plenty of game improvement tips. It's time for a road trip to a few of the finest courses and resorts in Wisconsin. And we visit an ideal 19th hole. Hello everyone and welcome to Chicago District Golfer. You know, 1914's a pretty good year. Wegman Park made its debut in the city of Broad Shoulders, of course you know it today, as Wrigley Field. And 1914's also when Wilson Sporting Goods was formed and the Chicago District Golf Association came into being. The CDGA was formed at Hinsdale Golf Club, a place still thriving today. The initial meeting is actually a golf outing in which representatives from 25 Chicagoland clubs took part. That event happened in the fall of 1913 and then in the spring, coal magnet Francis S. Peabody took charge and formed the CDGA. Francis Peabody was a very successful man. He was a founder of the Peabody Coal Company, which I think is still the largest coal company in the United States. And um, he, was, uh, he was an ex executive, uh, a man of action, and when he saw something uh, or came across something that he felt needed to be corrected or improved, he took action. And um, he was very concerned about the uh, welfare of the caddies that were uh, working at the golf courses in the Chicago area. Here in Hinsdale's Centennial Room, the club's golf history is celebrated through its many mementos and keepsakes. Its rich history includes the birth of the CDGA. In addition to caddy welfare, the associations formed to ensure that clubs avoided big events the same day as the CDGA held its tournaments. The CDGM was started in 1914. Our state amateur started in 1931. Uh, they started to get into other areas, so like anything else, again, a company that's new or whatever, it started to evolve in different ways during the first 20 years. The first year, they had a, uh, a uh, CDG Amateur Championship, uh, they had a CDG Open, and they, they had a caddy tournament. And um, the trophies, I think, for those are all still available, including the, uh, the, the caddy trophy. Uh, Chick Evans won the amateur championship. There were some big time tournaments around the Windy City from 1914 to 1933, like U.S. Opens, PGA Championships, and Western Opens. And getting around back in the day wasn't exactly ideal with courses strewn across Chicagoland. Thankfully, many of the courses were then, and still are, connected by railroad. What you saw in those very early days is the courses were built along the railroad lines. The great road network hadn't been built. Before that, it was either the train or horse and buggy, unless you wanted to hoof it. And so, Chicago Golf Club was built along the railroad lines, Elmhurst, the original Elmhurst, Hinsdale, all those courses on the south side, and look up on the North Shore where all the courses are. Almost all of them are within walking distance or a short buggy ride. When you look at it um, and, and you think of what the modes of transportation were back then, uh, when you think of what the communication was back then. Naturally, there was no fax machines, let alone email and web and everything else that we take for granted nowadays. Everything was handwritten letters. Uh, it was not easy to go from point A to point B. As you look back, yeah, there were some limitations that they had. They probably didn't realize there were limitations at the time. But we look back on it and go, uh, they did a lot of work to get this thing off the ground. In the 1920s, Chicago Golfer magazine came along, the predecessor of Chicago District Golfer. Inside its pages, one could find information on courses around town, stories on tournaments, informative instruction, and the latest cool new products. And that remains true today. You know, they talk about the 1920s being the golden age of sports. 
uh, with Babe Ruth and Bobby Jones and everything else. And with the CDGA being relatively new, I think the timing of that uh, fit very well with the expansion of the game and to have the CDGA there during those years. I think the other thing is just how the association kind of grew and expanded and started to bring in other services such as uh, the state amateur in 1931, the handicap system in 1930. So the flexibility and the foresight of those individuals that founded us really set the groundwork for the future. The handicap system was implemented in 1930 with about 4,700 players participating for the yearly fee of just $1. Coming up next, we'll check out the new putter that was conceived here in Chicago, and we'll talk John Deere Classic with one of the top players in the world. You're a complicated, diverse creature. A fine mix of debonair, and adrenaline, battle scars, and good jokes. With an exceptionally smooth taste, only 95 calories and 2.6 carbs, Michelob Ultra is the superior light beer. Perfect for every side of you. Many people think you run a business just to make money. No, you run a business because you get to build something. You get to impact the future to help employees and partners put their kids through school. You get to create value that didn't exist before because that's your name on the building. And it's not just a payroll, it's people's lives. And they're like family. And there's nothing like reporting to yourself. At MB Financial Bank, we know why you work. MB means business. Hi. I'm Ed Stevenson, PGA professional and director of golf for the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County Golf Courses. Today we're out at Oak Meadows in Addison. You know, when I talk to golfers about what tip they've heard more than any other, they all say, keep your head down. And we've all heard it, whether it's a playing partner, a buddy, someone suggested that when we play golf, we should keep our head down. Today, I'm here to tell you to forget about it. In fact, I'm gonna encourage you to keep your head up for better posture and for better body movement. Here's what I mean. When we find a golfer that's overly fixed on keeping their head down, it creates a couple of problems for them. First of all, it takes their posture and it tends to round out their posture a little bit too much. And also when our head is down too far, we're in a position where as we start to turn our shoulders, we have a conflict for space and our shoulder tends to bump into our chin, which makes keeping your head still almost impossible. So instead, I'd like to encourage golfers to keep their head up just a little bit. And here's how this will look. As we set up, we'd like to take our chin and keep it up just slightly. And as you can see, by bringing our chin up, it tends to make our posture and our spine a little bit better for an athletic swing. And it also, by keeping our chin up, allows us to make a swing where there's plenty of room for the shoulders to do their work and turn underneath our chin. So for a better swing and a more athletic movement, forget about keeping your head down. We really want to keep our eyes on the ball. And if we can put our head in a position that does that, golfers will hit better shots. So once again, I'm Ed Stevenson from Oak Meadows. Hit them straight. Great thoughts there, Ed. Thank you. Next month, the John Deere Classic returns to the Quad Cities at the TPC Deer Run. With the absence of the BMW Championship, it'll be the only PGA Tour event in Illinois this year. Two of the top 15 players in the world are planning to tee it up and win it for the second time. 19-year-old Jordan Spieth blasted his way onto the tour last year by holing out this shot from a greenside bunker on 18 to make it into a three-man playoff. On the fifth playoff hole, the kid who seems to have that it factor found himself in the trees on Deer Run's difficult 18th. He played a fearless, low running shot that bounded to the back of the green. The Texan easily two putted from there for his first tour victory, ensuring full playing status for 2014. Hey, it's the first time, guys. <laughs> You'll learn. You'll get better at this. Three-time Ryder Cupper Zach Johnson's a fixture at the John Deere Classic, having won the event in 2012. He's from nearby Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and proudly represents this tournament, which began in 1971. 
I mean, they, they work hard there. I mean, everybody does. Uh, certainly John Deere works hard to make it a great event. Um, they make it a family-run oriented event. The big dig on Tuesday night for us uh, players and families, and then um, just everything they do inside and outside. Uh, you know, the golf course is great. TPC Deer Run is terrific. Um, you know, low scores, but it's that time of year. You know, it's just the way it is. There's not much rough, and the greens are perfect, so that's just what you, you know, that's what happens, but that's what it promotes. But uh, they've done a great job, you know, having the plane that goes to the, to the British Open certainly doesn't, doesn't hurt. One of Johnson's biggest victories came last year in the BMW Championship at Conway Farms in Lake Forest. The FedEx playoff event had a star-studded field, but a blistering final round seven under par 65 gave Johnson his 10th career title. If anything, it just validated the fact that I'm doing the right things. I've got the right team. I've got the right approach. And... Uh, you know, it was a matter of being patient because prior to that I had a lot of number, a number of great finishes and I just couldn't crack the win. So um, it was, uh, you know, hard work paid off. And more than that, I think just realization that uh, I'm doing the right things with the right people. He's, he's got, got a lot of guts. Style, he's got a lot of guts. Yeah, lot he of really guts. does. He's not afraid to win. When he gets in this situation, a lot of guys might back up and he wants to keep going, putting the pedal to the metal. And, that's the difference. Zach is a thinking man's player, probably best known for his putting prowess. He works at it, but knows you can't make them all. I don't know if there's one key. I mean, I think there's there's certainly some te technique involved, but there's also a lot of feel involved. I mean, I think it's a matter of um, just understanding, you know, the outcomes are relevant and just hitting the putt. I mean, you're going to hit good putts that don't go in. You're going to hit bad putts that do go in. So it's a matter of just being patient and, uh, you know, waiting for them to drop. Take a spin out to the Quad Cities and see Jordan and Zach at next month's John Deere Classic. Things kick off the week of July 7th. A putter that actually makes sense and golf shoes that are comfortable? Our Dave Lockhart introduces us to some innovative new items which just might help you enjoy the game a bit more. Radius Roll Putters is a new company based in Chicago getting a fair amount of attention. It features technology that seems quite logical. Its putters are uniquely rounded, where the equator of the putter hits the equator of the golf ball, meaning there's no friction between the putter face and the ball. Thus, the ball begins rolling immediately. The equator of the golf ball is the center line where the ball would be halfway up, the point at which you would actually strike the golf ball. Most flat face putters either hit the ball below the equator or I guess in, in essence it doesn't really matter because with the loft on there it picks the ball up, throws it in the air, puts backspin on it, when it hits the ground it hops and skids before it starts rolling. The company spent five years in research and development and takes great pride in being based in Chicago and in the good old U.S. of A. Number one, we think we make, you know, the USA makes the best quality products in the world. Number two, we have a much better turnaround time than most people because if we need it, we go right to the manufacturer. They make it to our specifications on the spot. Golf shoes have been gaining traction in the retail sector in recent years, mostly because of the casual and more athletic looking styles. One well-known company is making a welcome splash into the market. Uh, we use a Rev Light midsole. That's our you know, New Balance's lightest midsole they can use. Very lightweight, very great cushioning, but also a lot of responsiveness in that cushioning. Again, it's a spikeless outsole. It looks like it's spiked, but it's just two color rubber outsole. Um, and this is on the Minimus platform. So what Minimus means, it's narrow through the heel, narrow through here, and then wider in the forefoot. So it lets your toes splay apart, gives you again that wider base platform to improve their balance. Another footwear company recently joined the golf shoe fray. Skechers understands what people are looking for in today's game. Well, I think, you know, the fashion trend was set a couple years ago. Younger golfers that are getting into the marketplace didn't like the old style golf shoes, so they started to branch out into more colorful types of shoes. But these shoes are so lightweight, you can not only go to the 19th hole, you can go to your car, you can walk around it, more like golf sneakers than really the old, heavyweight golf shoes. Longtime shoemaker Adidas continues to tweak its line. The athletic style of the Audi Zero is now wider and lighter than last year's model. Adidas is always seen as an innovative company and we think we have a, a few new breakthrough technologies that are really going to change the golf market. The first big product we have is the Audi Zero One. 
So the reason it's called Audi 01 is, is because of the one-piece upper, where we have seven layers bond, hot press bonded into a one-piece upper, which creates an extremely comfortable and lightweight upper. So last year we had a 10.6 ounce cleat. This year we have a 9.6 ounce cleat. So we've saved 10%. It's also interesting that the Addy Zero golf shoe has a spike in the middle of the sole, a la Ben Hogan in the 1950s. Next on the tee, we'll stretch it out with our friends at Athletico and take a tour of a few of the finest courses in Wisconsin. Bose Creek Country Club has set the standard for public courses with a private club feel. This exquisite 18 hole championship layout offers the exclusive member four day concept Pay just one fee and you get unlimited golf with a cart and full use of the bent grass practice facility. Plus there's Porter's Pub, a casual English style restaurant and bar that will complete your day the way you want to play. It's all here at beautiful Bose Creek Country Club in Elgin, Illinois. Are you ready to go? How's the hip? I think you know that we have to take this one plant at a time. It's really the only way that Eunice Feldman knows how to garden. We have got a lot of great bulbs, strong perennials. I am looking forward to a great season and can't wait to get back out onto the field. So thank you and good night. If you're a golfer, then the Chicago District Golf Association has something for you. The CDGA is home to a state-of-the-art golf handicapping service, which allows golfers of all skill levels to compete on a level playing field. The CDGA sponsors and conducts more than 50 championships for amateurs, high and low handicappers, juniors, seniors, men and women. The CDGA is a leader in charitable causes that brings the game to those with special needs. The CDGA is truly for everyone who plays the game. Visit CDGA.org for membership information and more. Hi, this is Jeremy Smith, physical therapist with Athletico, coming to you live from the golf course today. We've all been in the situation where we show up a little bit later than expected to the golf course and only have a couple minutes to get ready before we're expected to tee off. In that situation, one of the most important things to do is to stretch out those muscles and get them warmed up. One of the best ways to do this is what's called dynamic stretching. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do that so that way you can get ready for the round, prevent injury, and help you kind of improve your game throughout the day. You grab a club, you're going to start with hip swings, okay? This is going to warm up the hips, okay? You're going to feel it on the inside of the hip, the outside of the hip. Swing your leg back and forth, give it a nice good stretch. It's a dynamic stretch in that it continues to move. It's not a static stretch where you're going to hold it. Another one is a reverse hamstring stretch. So you're going to go down with your knees bent, grab the bottom of your toes, straighten your knees as much as you can, come back down, straighten the knees, down, straighten, 10 times, okay? That's gonna get your legs a little bit closer ready for the round. Then you're gonna take your club up over your head, stretch those pecs out, get everything nice and ready to go. Now we're warmed up, the muscles have some blood flow going to them, they're a little bit looser to help prevent injury. If you do feel some pain after the round, make sure you stop by an Athletico for a complimentary injury screen. Thanks, Jeremy. It's great to see you at the course. You know, there are certainly a number of outstanding public golf choices in the Midwest, but it seems Wisconsin has a few really good ones, including a number in the top 100. Sounds like it's time to take a little road trip. Just a mere hour from Chicago's northern suburbs lies a golf property featuring three championship courses designed by Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, and Lee Trevino. These icons of the game created the undulating and fun tracks at Geneva National. Each of them all immaculate in their own way, but all feature well-manicured bent grass fairways uh, and greens as well along with five separate tee boxes for a golfer to really get a chance to, to choose their, their level of play. Um, the, the, each course lines up, uh, lines up to the challenge that the, golfer wants to, that the golfer wants to have. The resort also features the tasty new Hunt Club Steakhouse and the fully renovated Geneva Ridge Hotel. 
You can also stay at the inns, six comfortable villas located right next to the golf courses. The Inns of Geneva National um, is very unique in the fact that you can basically roll out of bed um, and you're on the first tee. Uh, we're literally located 400 yards from the clubhouse. Um, and what the inns, the inns set up is completely different than Geneva Ridge in the fact that we offer six different inns, each inn featuring six separately keyed guest rooms, um, so that it's, it, it can be used as a group, um, but you can also, you can also visit um, and enjoy it as a couple's retreat or a weekend getaway. On the other side of Lake Geneva, you'll find Como Crossings at Hawksview. Built on the land of a former ski slope, this 36-hole facility epitomizes what Wisconsin golf is all about. There's plenty of nature to observe and a multitude of challenging shots over natural landforms, making it easy to see why this is the area's only five-star course. Head farther north to the picturesque area of Green Lake and you'll come upon a course that's unlike any other in the Midwest. Built in 1930, Lawsonia Lynx is a track with robust bunkering and fast elevated tilted greens. The layout is reminiscent of wonderful Lynx courses in the British Isles and usually plays like true Lynx courses, firm and fast. And we have two golf courses, the Woodlands and the Lynx, and a lot of people think the Lynx is wide open which it is, but however, if you grip it and rip it, like you said, you get one of those traps, elevated uh, steep bunkers, you're not gonna get out very easily. And the fescue does creep up, uh, creep up on you also. It's just the true natural uh, beauty of it. Every day you play the Lynx course, it's like playing a different golf course because the winds change. Um, it's, 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 it's true one of a kind golf course. Let's head a bit east to the amazing American Club and the glorious Pete Dye designed courses in Kohler. Here you'll find a spirited romp of 36 holes at the river and meadows courses. And just 15 minutes away on the shores of Lake Michigan lies the Irish course in the world famous Whistling Straits. Well, Black Wolf Run was our original golf courses. They opened 25 years ago. Um, and they're, you know, the upwoods kind of hunting, fishing land that you would see in Wisconsin. So it's very traditional uh, topography here in northern Wisconsin. And then Whistling Straits, which is located about 10 miles north of here, is on Lake Michigan. And that was designed to give you the rugged feel of the coast of Ireland. So you have two very distinctive properties. One, a very traditional upwoods Wisconsin, and one is something you really wouldn't see in this part of the country at Whistling Straits. All of the wonderful Kohler layouts rank among America's top 100 courses. For a really unique experience, you can play the river course and watch the fishermen as they attempt to hook salmon on their way upstream in the Sheboygan River. During the summer and the fall, uh, we have the salmon that are running upriver at Black Wolf Run. So uh, it's a, just a great time of year. You see all the colors changing, the leaves changing, uh, and you get 24 to 30 inch salmon jumping up river. So it's not uncommon to be teeing off on one hole and look over into the river and see fly fishermen in there catching salmon. So it's a pretty special time. And stay tuned, there's talk that the ageless Pete Dye may be designing a fifth course along the shores of Lake Michigan near Whistling Straits. Up next, we'll hear from one of the top players on the Champions Tour, plus we'll enjoy one of Chicagoland's best 19th holes. Have an exceptional golf experience at Aldine Golf Club in Rockford, where you'll experience a fantastic challenge of golf on this championship course. Aldine Golf Club was voted one of the top 50 courses in the U.S. with Queens fees under $50 and ranked the best municipal course in Illinois by Golf Digest. Play a top-notch course at an affordable price. That's Aldine Golf Club. For the best rates, book your tee time online at aldinegolfclub.com. Many people think you run a business just to make money. No, you run a business because you get to build something. You get to impact the future, to help employees and partners put their kids through school. You get to create value that didn't exist before, because that's your name on the building. 
And it's not just a payroll, it's people's lives. And they're like family. And there's nothing like reporting to yourself. At MB Financial Bank, we know why you work. MB means business. It was an awesome week last year. It's going to be a great week this year. Uh, great venue, great sponsors, great fans. It's, it's the perfect week. It's a perfect storm for us. Thanks, Craig. We're looking forward to seeing you defend at the Encompass Championship later this month. You know, there are many 19th holes in Chicagoland where you can grab a hot dog and a cold one, but then there's the 19th hole at Arrowhead. Let's pull up a chair at the centerpiece in the town of Wheaton. Chicago's best 19th holes is presented by Michelob Ultra. Many different things can work together to make a great 19th hole, such as the ambiance and the staff, but perhaps the most important thing is the menu. Uh, at a lot of places you see, you know, burgers, brats, hot dogs, things like that. Here, uh, the menu is substantially more um, unique and, and really almost high-end, although we're not really priced that way. And uh, when you come here and, uh, and look at the menu, one of the common responses we get from people is like, wow, this isn't something I'd expect to see at a golf course. You start with the simple stuff, you know, and uh, you take our burger. It's a half-pound Angus beef burger served on a brioche bun. Um, don't try to get too crazy with it, but it's a great burger. Uh, well, here we've got our Thai chili chicken wings, kind of a sweet and spicy uh, dish with a, a lime cilantro dipping sauce, so it makes a really fun, cool cooling uh, off the, the zip that you get from the wings. It's a really different flavor. Take it from us, the food's exceptional, but a great 19th hole cannot rest on its menu alone, and the Arrowhead facility is up to par with its delicious food. We have our dining area, which is kind of your white linen, uh, you know, fine dining experience. Uh, then you have the bar area, which, you know, for Blackhawks games, for golf tournaments, for, you know, uh, some of the horse races, you know, we get, you know, rather uh, full. Uh, you have a patio with 18 tables overlooking the golf course. Um, one of the more unique views in the area. Uh, one of those views that people plan on, on getting to. And uh, you get through the day to get to our patio. The food and the ambiance of the bar and patio are no doubt exceptional, but it's all the little things combined which make for a great 19th hole at Arrowhead. It's the sense of community that exists here. You know, uh, once you come in here a few times, the, the staff knows your name, you get to know their names, you get to know the people around you, and, and the environment is, uh, is very conducive to wanting to stay for a long time and just, just hang out. There are certainly some tasty delights at Arrowhead. And don't forget, it's fully renovated 27 holes of golf. Be sure to go to cdga.org for everything golf-wise in the great state of Illinois. You can also post your scores and monitor your handicap. Hopefully this show will help you lower your handicap. Thanks so much for watching, Chicago District Golfer.